Hello everybody, Spectrum here and today's video is about Romulus, the mythical founder of Rome. Now, the tale of Romulus is widely regarded to be mythical, even the parts that are believable. Archaeological evidence shows the site of Rome was inhabited well before the 8th century and most likely Rome came into being from several settlements over time uniting into a single one, making it rather unremarkable as far as ancient times go, as that was not uncommon at the time. The point of this is, since all of this is according to legend, it should be taken with a grain of salt, if not disregarded as truth entirely. So, according to legend, or Livy to be more specific, Romulus and his brother Remus were born to a vassal virgin named Rhea Silvia. Now, Rhea Silvia was the daughter of the usurped king of Alba Longa, Numitor. She was made a vestal virgin by her uncle and usurper King Amulius with the goal of ensuring Numitor's line would come to an end. However, Rhea Silvia was uh, forcefully impregnated and then gave birth to two twins. In response to this, Amulius ordered the two twins to be drowned by the Tiber River but were saved by the god Tiberinus and then suckled by a she-wolf until they were adopted by a shepherd named Faustulus. Eventually, the two boys grew into becoming natural leaders of their community and involved themselves in the power struggle between Numitor and Amulius, ending with Numitor back on the throne. After this, the two twins set out to build a city of their own. They would arrive back at the place they were originally supposed to drown, but they disagreed on which of the seven hills they were to build their city upon. Romulus preferred the Palatine Hill, while Remus preferred the Aventine. This disagreement was followed by a contest of augury. Remus saw six auspicious birds, but Romulus saw twelve, both claiming victory for themselves. This still eventually devolved into a dispute, where Romulus would kill Remus, found the city of Rome, establish himself as its first king, and then established the government, institutions, military, and religious traditions. The official date for the foundation of Rome is April 21st, 753 BC. One of the first things Romulus did was fortifying the Palatine. This was followed by marking out the limits of the city. Romulus also divided the population of the city into three tribes, the Ramnes, Titienses and Luceres. Each tribe was presided over by an official known as a tribune, and further divided into 10 curia. For military purposes, each curia provided 100 soldiers and 10 cavalry. Thus, the first Roman army was 3,000 infantry and 300 cavalry, the later of which would eventually become known as the Caleres and form the royal bodyguard. Now, what is confusing about this is the names of the three tribes were probably not from the times of Romulus. Each tribe represents a different type of people, specifically the Ramnes are the Latins, the Ditians is the Sabines, and the Luceres the Etruscans. So this division probably occurred after the influx of migrants at the very least, and maybe even after the war against the Sabines. To encourage the growth of the newly found city, Romulus outlawed infanticide and established an asylum for fugitives in the Capitoline Hill. Here all kinds of people would join the new city escaped slaves, runaway criminals, and even ordinary people trying to seek a new life could claim protection and request Roman citizenship. Romulus also founded the Senate by choosing 100 men from the leading families. These men were called the Patres, Latin for fathers, essentially considering them to be fathers of the city. Their descendants came to be known as patricians. The rest of the population were the plebeians. By the way, some translations of Livy's History of Rome say these first 100 men were chosen possibly because they were the only ones who could name their fathers, an indication of the utter dregs of society that helped form Rome if there ever was one, but this isn't in every single translation I found. Regardless, it's food for thought. The problem that emerged from this was most of the new population was mostly unmarried young men, and not exactly a lot of women. In order to solve this issue, Romulus first sent envoys to other cities, asking to allow intermarriage with their people, but were rebuffed. So he decided to get sneaky and downright terrible about it. He announced a huge festival, inviting people from the neighboring cities to attend, and many did, especially the Sabines. And then, once given the signal, the Roman man kidnapped the unmarried women and, uh, well, forcefully married them. The women weren't exactly thrilled about their situation, but Romulus calmed them down by explaining that their whole ordeal was their father's fault, and not, you know, the people who actually kidnapped them, for refusing intermarriage with the Romans. I wonder what a woman in more modern times would make of all this. Naturally, this led to a war between the Romans and the Sabines, and a lot of other people who wanted to knife the Romans for stealing their women. 
The first to attack, according to Livy at least, were the other people, which Romulus defeated. But the Sabines were the most formidable opponents to the Romans. In any case, the Romans and the Sabines would eventually fight at the Battle of Lacus Curtius, the future site of the Roman Forum, in which both started killing each other, but then the women intervened, pleading both to come to an agreement. In the future, the Romans and the Sabines would form a single community, in which both Romulus and the Sabine king Titus Tatius would rule together. And then Titus Tatius was killed in a riot at Lavinium, and very curiously, Romulus didn't try to avenge his co-ruler's death. I wonder why. Back in full control, Romulus would eventually conquer the city of Fidenae in order to deal with all the raids into Roman territory they had been doing. Another city raiding Roman territory was the Etruscan city of Vei, which would establish itself as the biggest rival to Rome for the next 300 years. Truly, the OG nemesis. Romulus would defeat Vei's army in battle, uh, not by himself of course, but found the city too well fortified to besiege, so he just ravaged the countryside instead. I'll have quite a bit more to say about the city of Vei once we get to the early Republic. I even have a joke reserved for it. Romulus's reign came to an abrupt end when, one day, while he was inspecting his army in a plain near the Lake of Capra, a sudden storm emerged and enveloped Romulus in a mist. When the storm passed, the king had disappeared, and quickly the Romans began seeing Romulus as a god. With the death or ascension, whatever way you want to put it, of Romulus, there was a period of crisis where no new king was named, but the Sabine faction, who wanted to be back in the driver's seat, found a worthy opponent, Numa Pompilius. But that's for next time. Now, was Romulus a real person? Well, uh, certainly not the way he's described. It's possible the figure of legend was based on a real person, but at the very least, his exploits are greatly exaggerated. But he could have existed. After all, most historians seem to agree that Gilgamesh was a real person. Maybe Romulus is too. The name probably comes from the city though, and not the other way around as the legend goes, and there are numerous other more plausible theories behind Rome's name. Anyway, that's all for now. I know this video might appear quite short, and really this will likely be the case for every video regarding the Roman kings, but truthfully there isn't a lot to say since there really isn't a lot of information about them. This was Spectrum, and I'll see you soon.